In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get down to the floor safely and comfortably. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different simple strategies that'll help you if you have pain getting down to the floor. I'm gonna show you some advanced options. I'm gonna show you the very basic, simple options that you can use no matter what level of strength you're at right now. I'm gonna talk about the limitations that you're probably experiencing that make it hard to get down to the floor. And I'm gonna show you exercises that you can use to build strength and flexibility so you can get down to the floor without pain. And if you watch through to the end of the video, I'm going to explain all the different advanced strategies that you're working towards and building towards. And I'm going to explain progressions that will help you get to that level. So let's get started by talking about what it means to get down to the floor safely in an ideal situation with a body that's fully functional. Ideally, you wanna have a lot of different options to get down to the floor, whether that's an Asian squat, whether that is a split squat, whether that is just folding over and putting your hands on the floor and coming down like that, whether that is just falling down and catching yourself with your arms. You wanna have options, but right now, you're probably thinking all those methods I just showed you are insane and only for young people, and this guy must only be 18 years old. Thank you for the compliment. I actually recently turned 40 years old, and I have a kid, and I have also been in your same position. In my 20s, I had a lot of trouble getting down to the floor and up from the floor because my body had atrophied because doctors kept telling me the best thing to do for all my injuries and all my aches and pain was to rest. I trusted my doctors and physical therapists and chiropractors and acupuncturists. They all told me this, rest, 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 and eventually I'd get better, but guess what? That didn't work, which is why I now say don't get caught in rips. R-I-I-P-S, rest, ice, injections, pills, and surgery. Those are all things we don't want to get involved with. So let's not get caught in rips and let's ATM, always think muscles. We want to work these muscles, teach our muscles how to move the bones because bones themselves don't move themselves. So if we want to get our bodies down to the floor safely, we need to get the right muscles functioning. So let me show you a couple strategies to help you get down to the floor. Here's the first strategy. Use the wall. Get a chair or something stable next to the wall that's lower and closer to the floor. You're going to start walking your hands down the wall, walking your feet away from the wall. Now you're going to hit a point where you're thinking, ah, I don't think I can go any further, I can't go any lower, or I'm going to fall and hit my face. Make sure you don't fall and hit your face. This is where you transition over to the other chair. This particular chair that I'm using is not that stable. I don't recommend it for you for this particular strategy. I'm just using it because it's convenient. Use a stable chair. Don't use a wobbly chair or an exercise ball. Once you've got your hand on here, you're going to bring your other hand down. Now you're almost to the floor. Now you can let one leg walk over to the side and then the other knee can bend and you slowly land yourself down on the floor and you're set. You have now made it to hands and knees and if you want to lie down you can go ahead and shift onto your hip and you are basically home and you get to lie down and you are there. Now if you want to get back up, of course I have another video which I will link to in the description box so you can watch it after you're done with this video. Now let's look at a slightly more advanced way to get down to the floor using the wall and no chair. So this one requires more flexibility in your hamstrings, better control of hip flexion which means folding out the hips. So if you can do this, awesome. You're just going to be walking your hands down the wall until, oh, no, I'm good. I don't have to walk my feet back because I've got the flexibility. I'm going to put my hands down. Maybe I shift a little bit and then I can bend the knees and come down like that. Boom. But that requires hamstring flexibility, hip flexor strength, and just general confidence in what your body can do. If you can do that, awesome. If you can't, just use that first strategy that I showed you. Third strategy is to again use the wall or a sturdy piece of furniture and you're going to have your inside leg, the one closer to the wall, behind you. Then you're going to do a split squat. So you're dropping the knee down towards the floor, both knees are bending, and then you're down. Congratulations, you've made it. And then do whatever you want on the floor. This version, this strategy requires some more knee strength. So if you feel like, oh, I don't know, I can't get that low. If you feel like the lowest you can get is here and then it's all too wobbly, that's okay. 
you're gonna need to build some strength and flexibility to be able to use this other strategy. And that is doable. It is absolutely doable for you. So don't start making up excuses about why you can't do it. The three strategies I've just shown you all use assistance with the wall. You can of course substitute any piece of furniture like a couch for the wall. So for that first strategy, if I wanted to, I can use the armrest to walk myself down and then I've got this lower piece of the couch and then I can move one leg out to the side, touch down and I am on the floor. For the more straight legged version, I can just use this part of the couch and then look, I'm already down and walk it back, walk it back down to the floor. And for the split squat version, if I just hold on to the armrest, I can just slowly lower myself down to the floor, touch down, and then I can reach over or do whatever I need to do to slide things around, shift, move like this, and then I'm on the floor. Where did you go? Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have assistance and you are unstable and you still wanna get down to the floor, then I applaud you for your bravery. Here's how you can do it. I also wanna warn you that neither of these is gonna be particularly graceful if you lack the flexibility and strength necessary and it is possible you might hurt yourself. So I strongly recommend you use assistance wherever you can get it. And if you're actually in a place where you need to get down to the floor and you have nothing and nobody around you, no walls, no nothing, then I don't know what kind of weird things you're doing with your life. If you want to let me know, drop a comment down below. So if you're gonna do this with no assistance, let's spread your feet wider than your shoulders, then you're gonna fold at your hips. So that's gonna look like this. You're gonna get as much of a fold at your hips as possible before you do anything with your spine. So you're trying to fold here, get your weight into the front of your feet here towards the toes and the ball of your foot. Otherwise you will fall backwards and not like it. Then you want to bend your back, be careful, and then you can start walking yourself into whatever position, feel stable enough to lower one knee, touch down, and then you're done. Where'd you go? If you find that you just don't have the flexibility to bend here and you're just stretching here and you're curling your spine, then I really don't want you to use this method. Remember that the folding happens at the hips and then at the spine at the very end if necessary. If you're kind of close, you're like within six inches and you're like, okay, if I just bend a little bit more, I can get there. That's cool. Just make sure you don't feel like your back is rounding a huge ton and you don't want to feel like your back is hurting because you're stretching it so much into flexion. Okay. So fold here, get close. And if you absolutely have to, and again, I don't really recommend this, but if you absolutely have to do this and you're a hundred percent convinced that your shoulders, your arms, your wrists are all strong enough to do this, then you can try to shift forward and land soft landing forward and then walk yourself down, touch down. And there, there you are. Now to make all four of those strategies much more helpful and much more smooth, it's a good idea to start building strength in the muscles that may currently be a little bit limited. For example, when you are trying to go down to the floor using the wall, it's really helpful to have hip flexion and be able to fold here. It's also really helpful if you wanna be able to do it without assistance to be able to fold here. So getting your hamstrings used to allowing that kind of motion and teaching your body how to coordinate that forward fold is going to be really helpful. The stronger you get at it, the better you get at it, the easier it's going to be to get down to the floor safely. All of the strategies also involve some portion of a split squat. Even if you're coming down and using your hands and backing out, there's a point where it's really helpful for one knee to be able to go down on its own. And if you can't do that, if the knee muscles can't do that, it's going to make that landing a lot harder. So we want to also build knee strength so that you are able to do that landing portion and so eventually you're able to just go down and do a split squat without any assistance and then just sit down on the floor. 
So first I want to show you an exercise that's going to help you improve your hip flexion, that forward fold. You're going to get your back up on the wall. Your feet are just going to be a little bit away from the wall. No exact number of inches. Just figure out a comfortable place. You're going to keep your butt against the wall. Your spine's going to stay in the same neutral position as you fold forward. What's nice is your butt's on the wall, so you're not having to balance yourself. And you're just training your back muscles to maintain spinal position and your hamstrings to lose Loosen up, lengthen as you fold forward. Ideally, you want to be able to touch your toes. And right now you're thinking, oh, that's impossible. Are you 22 years old or 16 or 5 years old or whatever? Look, it's not about age. It's about practice. And if you have not practiced this in 40, 50, 60 years, then you're not going to be good at it. And if you do practice it, you can get better at it. Maybe you won't reach gymnast level, but you will get better at it. I want to take one second to say a big thanks to the following supporters of this Upright Health channel. I want to say thanks to Stephen, Carolyn, Robin, and Steve for the $50 donations. I want to say a big thanks to Andre for the five Swiss francs. And finally, I want to say two thanks to Smarty McWannabe for the two $2 donations. If you want to support this channel too, use the thanks button down below or the PayPal link that you'll find in the description box. So again, we are starting at this position. We're going to just start folding at the hips here and we're just going to wherever we can, feeling our but sliding on the wall. So you have the bottom of your pelvis. You're going to feel the bottom of your pelvis drawing a line on the wall like this. Okay. Those sit bones. If you want to look it up, sit bones or sits bones or zitz bones or zitz genochen, if you speak the Germans and you're just drawing the sit bones up on the wall like that. Okay. Once you get a good idea of the motion, then you can even grab a weight to help you build strength as those muscles lengthen. So we want to build strength at every length. So you can just hold on to a light weight, start with five pounds and then just build up as you get better at it. And you're just going to work on that hinge. Let that weight take you down at the bottom position, hang out just a little bit and then use your hamstrings, fire your glutes, really mentally think about using those muscles. If this doesn't feel safe with a weight yet, that's totally fine. Don't use a weight. Just keep practicing this until you feel like, oh, okay, I get it. Because when you first start, this motion can feel really weird because we just don't practice it a lot in our daily lives unless you're Japanese. But even then, you probably don't bow this deep on a regular basis unless you really screwed up and you work for the prime minister or something. The goal here is to just keep improving your range of motion. You want to get a good solid fold at the hip joint because once you can get that fold, you're going to be able to fold and reach the floor or get much closer to the floor so that you can just put your hands down and then just walk into that down on the floor position. As you get more comfortable, you can of course come off of the wall and just practice without any assistance. This is assuming you have the balance and you feel stable enough to do this. If you're just starting out improving your ability to get down to the floor and this feels really tough, that's totally fine. I would suggest working on this for two sets of 10 to 20 repetitions with no weight and doing it every day if that feels doable and comfortable and okay and doesn't cripple you with soreness. If you feel like, man, that's super taxing and my body is like really confused, then do it every other day until you feel like, okay, I've got it, it feels good, I understand what I'm doing, and then go ahead and do it every day again as long as you don't feel like you're crippling yourself with soreness. Then when you feel pretty confident, go ahead and grab a five pound weight and start working on it twice a week with the weight and then all the other days keep doing it without the weight. Then you can bump the weight up maybe the next week. If you feel comfortable, make it eight pounds or 10 pounds and keep expanding your range and strength. Remember, we want to build strength at every length. I also want to show you one quick exercise to help you build strength around the knee so that you can touch down a lot easier and feel comfortable when you go down to the floor. 
So this is a very simple setup against the wall, again, so you don't have any balance issues. You're gonna walk your feet away from the wall and you're going to bend your knees. Now, there are a couple ways to mess with this exercise that'll make it harder or easier or more applicable to what we're doing when we're getting down to the floor. First of all, the deeper you go, meaning the lower you go to the floor, the harder this is gonna get. But you want to make sure that you're getting strength at every length. So if you are at just a shallow squat here and this feels hard, then that's fine. Just stay here and that's okay. Build the strength in this position before you start going a little bit lower. And even if you find like, oh yeah, I'm nice and strong in this low position, make sure you also check this higher position so that when the knees are straighter, you're still feeling like you have strong quads to control the angle of your knee. When you first start, it's important to make sure your feet are positioned in a way where whatever depth you go to, your knees are not getting way forward of your ankles. That's just a basic training thing because you're a beginner right now. But as you get stronger and you want more challenge, you can absolutely have your feet closer to the wall and slowly work yourself into to positions where the knees go in front of the ankles or even if the knees go in front of the toes. Those are okay, but you need to do them slowly, carefully, and approach those progressions very, very carefully. If you're just starting, don't even go there yet. Just make sure you're at a level where you can just get the knee muscles, these quadriceps, thigh muscles working. Hold this positions for 30 seconds to a minute. Find the angles that feel hard for you. Hold them, breathe. Try not to break too much of a sweat or have a towel handy. Again, the lower you can get, the harder this is gonna be. And if you really crap out, you might just end up on the floor. If you're just starting out, I'd suggest doing this one every other day, two rounds of 30 to 60 seconds. Make sure that you rest in between sets. Don't try to do 30 seconds, rest for five seconds, and then do 30 seconds again. Give yourself a solid minute rest, maybe even two minute rest before you do that second set. And remember to be patient. Don't force yourself into deeper and deeper positions just because you wanna get there now because all you're gonna do is hurt yourself. And when you feel ready for more exercises for your knees, then be sure to check out the video that I'm gonna to link to at the end of this video that'll help you get the knee strength you need to do things like a deep Asian squat. On your journey to being able to get down to the floor safely and comfortable, you will discover that in fact, your body should be capable of getting down to the floor in a myriad of ways. There is a veritable cornucopia of options to get yourself down to the floor. The stronger and more mobile your lower body and your upper body are, the more options you have for getting down to the floor. Getting down to the floor really is just as simple as allowing gravity to pull the mass of your body down to the floor and then using muscles to control your bones so that you don't slam into the ground. All the options that I showed you in the beginning of this video are gonna be helpful for you on your journey to creating more options for yourself. Whether you've been told you're too old or whether your bones are too brittle or whether your joints are rotted or arthritic or whatever, remember to ATM always think muscles. Muscles are the organs that control the way the bones interface. So even if the bones right now maybe don't interface correctly, maybe they currently grind or something like that or pop, still you want to think ATM always think muscles. Modern science has looked deeply into arthritis, into loss of cartilage, into all kinds of orthopedic diagnoses, and the modern science consistently shows that the bone damage and the cartilage damage that they see doesn't correlate to mobility or pain issues. So the thing that you can control is your muscles, so ATM, always think muscles. What will further help you on your journey into getting down to the floor are these videos here, so be sure to check those out. And if you found this video helpful and you wanna support this channel, hit the thanks button, leave me a monetary donation, or use the PayPal link that's in the description box, and I promise I will not spend your money on buying a better walking stick. Subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos, and as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.